Welcome to Questions with Mike. Today we're going to talk about memories. It actually has come up recently, but I've also had this conversation many times over, that there are certain people walking around who don't remember their childhood, or by and large are missing a massive chunk of their upbringing and they just have nothing to connect to. Um, I was driving with a good friend of mine the other day, and he was mentioning like, man, your memory is kind of imp impressive, like just the things you can recall from your childhood or whatever, because I have all these memories from being a kid of things that have happened or whatever. He's like, I don't remember most of my like life up till about high school. I think around high school is when my memories start kicking in. I was like, what? Because, I mean, there's like a whole life that you're living before high school, right? And he was like, yeah, I just, I can't, I don't have it. It's not there. I don't know why. And he's not insane. He's not like emotionally stunted. It's like, this is weird that those things are missing. And it's not the only time I've heard this. I've had several people in my life whom I know um, who are just fully functioning adults who just like are straight up missing gaps of their history. And I'm like, that's so weird. So we discussed this. Like, why does that happen? Why, why are those memories missing? And I'm not a psychologist. I don't know. I don't have like facts for you on what this is. But we did discuss objectively, like what some components might be. And I think there's some stuff that in that conversation are valuable, regardless of whether you mem remember your childhood or not. So one of the things that we noticed as a difference between my childhood and his were my parents, my mom especially, often would draw responses out of me, would ask me questions and like want me to respond to certain, certain experiences that we'd had or movies that we watched or whatever. She'd often ask for my opinion. We talked about our dreams all the time. Like, Recalling and reflecting on experiences that we all had together was a regular occurrence in our lives. And so I think that was, and contrarily, he didn't have that. His parents didn't do a ton of like question asking. There wasn't a lot of drawing out or pursuing of his perspective or experience on stuff. It just kind of happened. And just, he was just like, yeah, just, it was normal for us to not talk about that stuff and just to move on and whatever. I, was like, I think that seems like a very glaring distinction. Um, to the point where like, that's just my life. I reflect all the time, even with the way that I lead my team, we debrief all the time on the funniest things. We'll sit, just get back together and just process what just happened, who experienced what, what did you see, what was going on? Um, so I think from that practice, it actually like taught my brain and my inner world to just to like value things a certain way and to connect to them. And so because of the emotional attachment to the occurrence or what it meant to me and the commentary I got to put on it, it carried weight and significance in my story. And so it started becoming something that I could recall and connect to and be conscious of because of the, the practice of reflecting, of like dwelling on it and processing through it, you know, and debriefing, if you will. And so I think that was one of the biggest distinctions that he and I had growing up. There are other things as well, there are cultural backgrounds, um, lifestyle choices, that kind of thing. Um, but I think by and large, the biggest def difference was, in my experience, I was taking the time to reflect to like look back on things and to process and decide what do I think about this? What do I believe? What does that mean to me? Does this matter? Like making these decisions constantly about all these different experiences, which then defined them and like imprinted them on this database, I guess, that I have access to that there's still files that I can look at that are still telling me a story versus not processing any of it, just kind of blazing through experience after experience, occurrence after occurrence, unattached, unreflective, not engaged, right? Like that stuff gets lost apparently. And so I guess one of my thoughts on that is, and I've noticed that especially in my adult life as I'm learning how to like function and like discipline this thing and become more proficient and productive in what I'm doing. Reflection is a practice of the successful for the last few thousand years. It is a normal thing to stop and reflect. And I've been doing that my whole life. And so I'm grateful. I don't know if my parents meant to do that or if it just was like a byproduct of just the way they lived, but that was something that was passed to me that I was taught to do. And from that, I still do it to this day, the reflection piece actually helps extract pain of things that I didn't like or didn't understand or didn't want in my life. I got to look at those things and be aware of them and then be more conscious and intentional with how I responded. But then also, especially the beautiful and the, the, the special and the profound and the sacred in my life. I got to recognize those things and cherish them. And there are times where I'm even teaching in a class or whatever, my team like kind of just marvels at my memory. Like, I can't believe you can remember that so specifically because I've got all these minute details that I'm adding to paint a pretty clear picture. And I'm not trying to do that. It's not, that wasn't something I, I tried to make happen. It's something that's available because of the reflection piece, because those moments, especially like I have history with the Lord, these things that he did with me that weren't outward, like people couldn't see it, but inwardly there was this world of an experience and I reflected on that. I paid attention to the little things, the things he would say, the little nudges, the whatever, and what it meant to me and how I interpreted it. And I could recall them because of, I think, that reflecting practice. 
to the point where now, like decades later, I can still recall a moment that happened in a specific way, what they said, how it worked. Um, and keep in mind, my memories and facts might not line up, but I can recall what my experience was in that place. So all that to say, whether your memory's not great, you're missing them from the past or even currently, I would like to propose, a, by and large, a, a major solution to being able to grab hold of the details in your life, to appreciate them appropriately, whether they're positive or negative, is to practice the art of reflection. I don't just necessarily mean sitting in a quiet room by yourself, cross-legged, meditating. That's a form of it, I suppose. But even just like as you're living your life, just taking these little moments, like let's say you get out of Trader Joe's and you're in your parking lot and something happened, you just take a moment and you just like taste it, relish it, cherish it, you know, like explore it, have a moment with that memory. Like just, even though it just happened, like just give yourself a chance to catch up. I know with this thing going, going on in the internet and just our crazy busy schedules or whatever, sometimes we can't um, keep up with all the experiences we're having and then thus can't appreciate them and then often can't even remember because we're just going from thing to thing to thing without taking the time to reflect and without going into an intentionality place. I know in the business arena, especially, like I started feeling like my memory was slipping because it was hard for me to hold on to people's names. As I started becoming more and more of a public person and experiencing a lot more people, um, interacting with people and stuff, like I started realizing like I can't remember a lot of these people because I didn't have a pronounced experience with them. They had a pronounced experience with me because their perspective on the other end, but they weren't, I didn't know who they were. I had nothing, nowhere to hang them in my life. And so I couldn't hold on to the memory. And they come up to me like, yeah, I've met you four times. I'm like, I cannot remember this person. And I feel guilty. I'm like, that sucks. I don't want to make them feel like they don't matter. But I didn't have enough of a pronounced experience or reflection with them to actually hold on to who they were. Um, and I, I started thinking that my memory was slipping, but I started realizing it wasn't that my memory wasn't good because there are other areas of my life where my memory was kicking in like crazy, right? It was more about the, tempo and the speed and the intensity of the amount of information coming at me that I couldn't keep up with that was determining what I could hold on to. So I think that's true of all of us. If we practice the reflection thing, even with people in relationships, like maybe you don't want to do it alone. That's fine. Just recall with people who care about you. Like share that with people that you're living your life with. Like play it back. Like, oh my gosh, this happened today. You're not going to believe this. Well, and as you do that, you develop a faculty and a practice where your memory starts being able to rightly associate with experiences you're having and gets placed in your narrative that you actually have an understanding and a connection to it. In that place, you then get to like pull on stuff that you don't have to manage consciously because it's getting stored correctly. Kind of like when you clean your house, if there's nowhere for something to go, it's just going to end up on the coffee table. And then more stuff will end up on the coffee table. I'm speaking from experience. It's horrible. <laughs> But when we intentionally take the time and the effort to put the thing where it belongs and decide that this is where it's gonna live, whether it's in my living room or in my soul, right? That brings order and a, a recollection that I can go back and be like, oh yeah, that thing is here. I think a lot of us, our memories are being stolen from us because we're so busy and distracted that we're sacrificing the value of what we get to experience from the moments we live by not getting to reflect. There's so many things that happen with us and God that are so subtle and quiet miss them because it's so crazy busy and loud in here. I'm not admonishing people to not be busy, to not go hard at things, to not keep up with technology. I'm not saying don't do those things. I'm saying do those things and reflect. You know what I mean? Have technology. Use social media. Like, Go change the world. That's awesome. But also, like, remember that you're a person designed for love and there's something happening to you and there's a story being told and that matters to the Lord. It should matter to you and it matters to the people you care about. And so take the time to reflect on these things, to cherish them appropriately, to Give them the attention that they deserve, and they'll get placed in places that matter. Like this video, comment below, subscribe to this channel, hit that bell button. I'd love to know what are your reflections on this. Do you guys have experiences where you like you have gaps in your memory, or that's not your experience? And what are your thoughts? We'd love to see them in the comments below.